Hi friends, I am back with another video and this is gonna be a little bit of everything here. Hoping that I can help you out. I'm doing a very small haul, very small, just a few items that I wanted to show you. And I definitely wanna know what you think about this little haul that I got because this little haul right here is literally just me experimenting. So I'm gonna show you some of that. Um, I also want to show you a few items that have sold. This video is being recorded on September uh, 4th, 2023. I'm going to show you my sales from the last four days. Wish I could show you sales from before, but I had like a two-week summer slump where I was barely selling anything. So this will be a small what's sold here. Um, and then I also want to chat a little bit about my numbers for August. It's not going to be comprehensive. This is all like spur of the moment. As you can see, I'm not wearing any makeup. <laughs> um, so all spur of the moment, just grabbed some numbers because I wanted to show you all this. Uh, but before we get started, my name is Angela and I'm fairly new to this whole YouTube thing, but I am not new to reselling. I have been selling on eBay for about 15 years, give or take. Um, and if you've been watching any of my videos, you will see that I specialize or my niche, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it that is, um, bread and butter items. So where I live on the East coast and my demographic area, what I do, where I am, how things work, you're not going to find Chanel here. If you're looking for couture, if you're looking for Dior, if you're looking for high priced items, this probably is not the channel for you. But if you're like the average seller and you got to get what you can get and make money any way that you can, smack it up, flip it, rub it down, thrift, flip, repeat then you're going to want to hang around for a little while and you're definitely going to want to hit that subscribe button and you're definitely going to want to share this with your friends who are struggling or who are like me and can't get all of those really desirable items. Nonetheless, I am making um, lemonade out of lemons. I work with what I have. I'm not worried about what other people are doing. It can be a little discouraging when you're watching YouTubers who are like finding all this amazing stuff and all you're finding is Ann Taylor Loft. <laughs> you understand? Uh, well, that's where I am, but I'm not gonna let it get me down because for 15 years I have been selling on eBay and I do make money selling these regular brands as you're gonna see in just a minute. But first I wanna show you this little haul. This is actually, these pieces are actually from probably a month ago. It was an estate sale and I forgot to include this in one of my videos, but none of these are listed yet because I kind of just sat them in my death pile. And one day, if you hang around long enough, here's what we're going to do one day. I'm going to show you how I store my items and you can take a little visit with me down to my basement. And my basement isn't a finished basement. <laughs> it's a regular scary basement. So if you ever want to see that, uh, how I store my stuff and my system, uh, hang around for a little bit. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> so this little haul right here I got from an estate sale. I normally do not, I don't, I'm not a fan of estate sales and there are several reasons why. If you want to skip ahead and get to the haul, give me about three minutes to ramble. Um, I have found with estate sales that you're going to get one of two things most of the time you're either going to one of three things. Number one, it's gonna be an estate sale that is run by a company. And when there is an, uh, an, a, a third party involved, meaning that the family is not holding this sale, when there's a third party involved, a company that is running this estate sale, you're gonna find that the prices are going to be a little bit higher because there's a middleman there who wants their cut of whatever is being sold. This is when families don't feel like being bothered, they're in a rush, they just want the stuff going. And so they hire out a company to handle the estate sale. And you're gonna find that the prices are gonna be a little higher. Um, um, alternatively, the second thing that I find more often than not is you're gonna find that the family is running the estate sale. And oftentimes you will find that when the family is directly selling this stuff, they have an emotional attachment to the item. So they don't wanna let it go um, for cheap. They have those emotional ties and those emotional memories um, with those items. 
And so they will deliberately or subconsciously, here we go with the psychology, price the items higher because they really have an attachment to this stuff. And every now and then, I again, I run across a sale where it's the perfect storm of a family member who doesn't want to be bothered. They just want this stuff going and they let it go for cheap. Those are the ones that I like the most. Um, but overall and generally speaking i don't go to a lot of estate sales because more often than not i find one of the first two scenarios where the things are just priced too high nonetheless i did go to this sale and it was just a bunch of overpriced stuff or whatever um since i specialize in clothing however they did have some clothing items and it was one of those situations where they're like make me an offer make me an offer can you please just tell me the price please because if I give you an offer, I'm going to offer you a dollar each, okay? And then you're going to be offended and then you're going to be mad because you told me to make you an offer and that's exactly what I did and now you're offended. Just tell me how much the clothes are. They didn't do that. So, or she's just like, oh, bring me a pile, just get a bunch of stuff together and I'll give you a price. And I straight up told her, I'm like, well, I don't want to get a bunch of, and I wasn't rude, of course, but I'm like, I don't want to get a pile of stuff together, take all this stuff off the hangers and then we can't agree on a price and that type of stuff just makes me so uncomfortable nonetheless this person was just insistent upon me grabbing a bunch of stuff so that's what I did I grabbed like five items and she did give me a decent price I want to say it was so long ago I want to say that I paid was it twenty dollars I want to say it was twenty dollars for six items it's like 250 each I don't I don't know probably pay too much who knows nonetheless these were like more vintage or older style items and vintage is hit or miss with me I don't do a lot of vintage I'm, I'm lying nine times out of ten vintage is a miss for me I just don't know what I'm doing yet um and and I just don't haven't made a ton of money with more vintage items nonetheless I did pick up some of these items they're very much giving 1990s vintage um, the, the sizes are really small. And if you have watched any of my other videos, you will know that I, I try to stay away from very small items. I just don't have a lot of luck with them. But so this was just my little experiment. It's just like six little items that I forgot to show you on the other one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Cause I don't know what I was, I know what I was thinking. So this is an Alfani and this is a, still a current brand. They still sell this in Macy's, I believe. It's not one of their better brands. It's a petite, it's a size P, which is a very small size. It is new with tags um, and it is silk, 95% silk. So that's what I was thinking when I purchased this. I paid 250 for it. Hopefully I can get 15 bucks. I really don't know much. I don't know much about vintage. I don't know much about these really extra small sizes because I normally don't get them. So please do let me know in the comments when I'm done with this. If you think these were good buys, these are not listed yet, so we shall see. This is another Alfani, and you can see if you're familiar with Alfani, if you're a bread and butter seller like me, then yes, you have seen Alfani before, and you know that uh, the label does not look like that anymore. This one is a size P as well. She's just a really basic shell sweater. She does have the tags, and she is 100% silk. So the 100% silk is what got me. And the quality seems really nice and you know they don't make stuff the same the same anymore like they don't the quality is not the same anymore this one is another really tiny tiny item this is charter club she's a size too petite i got her because she is 100 percent linen and she has the tags please understand when i'm showing you stuff like this that these are not things i would have purchased if they didn't have the tags on them the tag is the determining factor for me with many of these items that I pick up in a lot of my hauls. You will see that, that things have tags on them. Everything that I sell is in excellent condition. It has the pin tuck. She's a really tiny size. I have no idea how long this is going to take to sell. I should just do one video devoted to like tiny sizes and then we'll see how it goes. If you have a lot of luck with the smaller sizes, please let me know what I'm doing wrong because I cannot sell this stuff to save my life, but we'll see. This one was an August silk, and of course she is 100% silk. Now she's a size small, but she does look like she has a shorter length, and maybe that's because she is vintage, I suppose. Maybe things were shorter length back there, back then. So if I got 10, six items for 20, 
what is that 250 or three dollars each i don't know i probably overpaid i, I should have only paid a dollar for this stuff but here we are it's what i did and we shall see this is another august silk piece and this person this estate sale the person had a lot of nice clothes um, i just couldn't afford to get them all like if they were if they had been priced at a dollar each i probably would have gotten a lot more but like i said i don't like playing that game of make me an offer or i'll tell you what the price is after you get a pile together i just wasn't interested we have another august silk and she is a size small and this one is a blend of silk and nylon but i really did like the little sequins the flowers going on there it's an older style, but maybe there's somebody out there who likes stuff like that. And then finally, what I got from that estate sale, uh, this one is, is interesting. I have never sold anything like this before. I have sold Ralph Lauren plenty of times before. And just so we're clear, Ralph Lauren, I treat Ralph Lauren the same way that I treat New York and Company, the same way that I treat Express, the same way that I would treat Loft. Ralph Lauren used to be that guy. It's it's just not, that's not the case anymore. At least for me. When you're picking up Ralph Lauren, you definitely want to do your research because it is very hit or miss. Prices are all over the place. The average button down Ralph Lauren, you're going to get maybe $13 or $15 for it. So like I said, no different than Express, Talbots or anything else. That is a, your regular bread and butter item. Don't, don't be mistaken in thinking that Ralph Lauren is like some type of real great brand because it's not. At least that hasn't been the case with me. I did, however, sell a 100% white linen men's button-down Ralph Lauren. I think it was more of a vintage because it was my husband's. I stole it from him and sold it. Um, and I actually sold that within probably less than a week, and it sold for $40. So there's something about that's why I said comp it out. But I'm going to tell you that 90% of the time, Ralph Lauren is just a miss. It's just a basic but I did get this. It looks like an older label and it looks like it's a put. I always get confused with this. Can you let me know in the comments when it's a P and an S? Does that mean petite small or, or is that the Spanish? Because in Spanish, it's like pequeño that starts with a P. So some some manufacturers will put the P, which stands for pequeño, um, and S, which stands for small. And then other manufacturers, the P stands for petite. I'm confused. I don't know. I'll have to measure it out. This is 100% silk. I took a gamble on this because she is silk. She does have the crest there. So I don't know. I, I haven't comped this out yet. I'm very curious to see if this is something amazing or if this is just your regular everyday bread and butter item so that was it for that it was just a little tiny haul that i forgot to show you all let's get into what sold for august so like i said before um every year i have a summer slowdown right happens without fail i'm already accustomed to it that doesn't make it any easier because losing hundreds of dollars in a month is not i'm never going to be okay with it right but it happens and sometimes it happens in july sometimes it happens in august this year it, it was the last two weeks of august were pitiful horrible it was really difficult to make sales and i was down to maybe making one sale a day if even that there were plenty of days where i didn't make any sales at all so keep that in mind when i am giving you my august numbers this is not fully in depth um, I didn't calculate everything down to the detail. This is just a really broad um, idea of what's sold. But first, I want to show you physically the eight. I believe I have eight items. Did I forget the? Of course I did. I did forget the other one. Let me grab. Give me one second. I'm back. <laughs> Let me start off with my, this is my, these are my sales from August 31st. It's only a few items because I haven't, as you can see, I haven't um, gotten these ready to ship out yet, but these are going to be shipped probably tomorrow. Today's Labor Day, so the post office is not open. I did sell this one item in the last four days, and this is early on September 4th, so probably going to get some sales a little bit later so this is eight or nine items just from august 31st and it does, doesn't really include all of today because i haven't sold anything today so it's like four days worth of items and i think i have eight or nine this is just a regular loft your real basic tank top from loft she um i actually had this listed i've had this for a while probably a minimum of a year 
She does have the tag. She's an extra large. And she sold on Poshmark for... <laughs> I didn't write it down. I want to say that she sold for around 13 bucks on Poshmark. Real basic. And this was something that I had not shared or promoted. I completely forgot about this in my Poshmark closet. Now, I normally do delist it or sell similar. What do you call it? Copy. Copy. I normally do copy my items every two months on Poshmark and just make a, make a, the new listing. This one I kind of forgot about. This has been like on the bottom of my closet forever. Um, I have no idea how the person found it. She's not linen or anything. She's just a basic cotton tank. And thank God I still had it because I probably would have donated this. That was my one sale in the last four days with Poshmark. Poshmark is very inconsistent for me. But maybe we'll talk about that at the end if I remember. These are my sales for eBay. I do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sales for eBay starting on August 31st. So August 31st is probably when my two-week summer slow down started to lift a little bit and I'm getting back to my average of like two items per day and as time goes on I'm getting better and better at listing things and finding things so I uh I, I feel like I'm starting to get to the point where I'm selling an average of three items per day which is not a lot compared to some standards but let's talk about these other standards so y'all watch these other youtubers who have thousands and thousands of subscribers thousands and thousands of people looking at their videos that's free advertisement right they're telling you their closet name and i ain't mad at it. i'm not mad at it go ahead make your money i love it for you i'm just saying do not compare your sales to people on youtube who have thousands and thousands of subscribers looking at their videos some of those um people who are watching their videos turn into customers and that is why they have more sales than you and I do. We don't have that. So, you know, two or three, I don't know if that's average or not. You let me know. I have 1,100 items in my closet and, and slowly building even more. And I get on average two or three sales a day. That seems really low. The first thing that I sold was this Raya or Raya Sun. This doesn't even have, oh my God, they're going to send this back. They're gonna send this back, I think. Okay, so I'm not 100% familiar with this brand. This is the tag that I saw, Raya's Sun. It is brand new with tags and it is a size medium, but I'm just now noticing that on the actual item itself, it does not have a brand label. Hmm, it's like a handwritten size medium. So I don't know if this was a sample item I don't know if the customer is going to want to return this because of that. So this is just a basic white tank. It has the crochet in the back. It's see-through. It has a tiny little spot, which I did mention in the video. I can't find, I mean, in the listing. I can't find it now. I feel like it was like a pen mark. Okay, I don't see it. I thought this had a little spot on it. Nonetheless, this sold for $9. I had it listed at 10. I started it off at probably $15. It wasn't selling as time went by. I kept lowering the price. I finally relisted it for 10 bucks and I did send an offer out for $9 and it did sell for $9. I don't like selling things for $9, but every now and then <laughs> I'm just trying to get rid of some of this stuff. So it does happen. I sold these Lane Bryant Alley, the Alley pants. She's a cropped pant. She is hunter green. She does have the lace on the bottom and she is a plus size. This is from Lane Bryant. It was a size 22. And I was surprised that these took as long. Let me get this, let me get this tag off of here. Now, this is funny because I'm seeing this tag and this looks like this is coming from my regular thrift store. Knowing me, I know I didn't pay $8 for this. So this must have been a half price day. So I probably paid $4 for these. And selling it for 20. Mm -mm. But I did have these listed. I wanted, I've had these listed for over a year lowered the price several times and as you can see they finally sold for twenty dollars and i believe that this was an offer that i sent out so the raya sun that i just showed was an offer that i sent out and the lane bryant was also an offer that i sent out so i had these listed for 23 i sent an offer for 20 bucks definitely thought they would have sold for more than that but that wasn't the case 
the third item that I sold was this Zenergy by Chico's outfit set. I forgot where I got this from. I got this from my honey hole, I believe. Yes, that's where I got it from. There's a church that just recently opened up a thrift store about a year or two ago. When they first opened, it was a honey hole. You could find stuff with tags. The prices were super reasonable. And the last few times that I've gone there, my secret is out. People know about it. And so I haven't been finding as much. I'm really sad about that, but so I did get this and I've had this listed for probably a year. She is a Zenergy by Chico's size one and it is the jacket and the skirt. Maybe I should have listed these separately and I sold this for, this was a full price, sold at $28 for the set. So this linen blouse, I've had this for quite some time. And as I can see, this was another one of those uh, full price thrift store items. But knowing me, I didn't, I know I didn't pay $5. So this must have been at least 30% off, probably 50. So we're going to say that I paid $2 and 50 cents for this. This is more of a vintage look. The brand is Focus. And I don't even know what size this is. A large 100% linen. I definitely thought that this would have sold faster, but I had this for over a year. She finally sold for full, no, 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 an offer that I sent for $18. I started her off at, I believe, $30 over a year ago, slowly kept lowering the price. And it looks like I finally relisted it at $20 and I sent an offer for $18 and it sold. I do feel like this should have went for more because it does have the tags. But that's the thing, you just never know. And as you can see, this is all bread and butter. They did sell. I didn't do the math to see how much profit I ended up making off of this stuff, but we can assume that on average, I paid $2 a piece for these items. This is a Chico's dress, size four. And surprisingly, this, so she's really soft. Um, she feels like a pajama, she has pockets, and she has the drawstring waist. She sold within, I think a day, and one day she sold at full price for $25. So I was really happy and surprised about that. She goes as very hit or miss. I sold these Lee jeans. This is another item. So, so these items are split like 50-50. No, I'm lying, like 70-30. 70% of this stuff is stuff that I had listed for a long time, like over a year. <laughs> and they didn't sell. So, um, it, which is good because I'm starting to move. Obviously, I want to move older items. I'm happy about that. But this is just a reminder to me that I have to get better at picking items because I don't want to hold on to stuff for a year and a half. This is something that I've probably had. I would not be surprised if I had these for two years. I just don't like selling jeans. These are just your Lee, Lee, and it could have been the size because this is an 18 petite. Maybe that's why, or an 18 short. Uh, I've had these for quite some time. They're more of like a bootleg, and I hear that bootleg is coming back. I hear that straight, straight leg is not the end thing. I don't really pay much attention to the trends and the styles. I just pick up stuff that has tags. So this took a long time to sell, but they did. I finally lowered the price to $15 and they did sell at that full asking price of $15. All of these items that I'm showing you are plus shipping. I do not get free shipping on pretty much anything. This one I knew was going to sell. She's so pretty. You may have seen this in one of my hauls. This is a Jones, New York size 16 and how long was she listed she is listed on Poshmark and eBay really cute she has that daisy print she does have the belts attached I did list this as new without tags because the, the tag is still attached the belt is still attached to the dress she sold for I had her listed at $22.99 and she sold for $20 uh, the customer sent me an offer And the final thing that I have sold in the last few days is this Lulu's dress. This is a Lulu's dress. I had her listed at $20. Just a basic black lace dress. She does have the little ruffles at the end. 
extra large. Lulu's is not all that people make it out to be. You have to find the right item. Had this listed at 20 and I sent an offer out for $17. So as I'm looking at my list over here, four of these items were either a customer sending me an offer or me sending an offer. So that's 50% of what I sold came from offers. So definitely, definitely something to think about. I know some people don't want to be bothered with offers. I know some people get lowball offers. When I set my items to accept offers, I put in the listing, um, not in the listing, but there's something you can do on eBay where you say that you don't want any offer, like to automatically accept offers of X amount. That's what I do. It's a, it's easy and breezy. I don't have to be bothered with low balls. If somebody sends a low ball, they're going to get that automatic generated message from eBay that the offer was declined, whatever. So when I get offers, it's normally a price that I set my item, the least amount that I was willing to accept. So it takes all the fuss out. While I have you here, I want to show you how I store my items. Just recently, I would say within the past year or last year, I finally went through my thousand plus items little by little and implemented a system where I have a plastic bag with a corresponding bin. And as a conservationist, as a tree hugger, as a person who loves the earth and is a minimalist and, and tries to be zero, zero waste or whatever, you know, I, I try, I'm very cautious about the things that I buy because I don't want to add to obviously our our pollution issue so it really pained my heart I tried to avoid this for so long I didn't want to buy all these plastic bags but eventually I did so that I could get more organized because it was driving me crazy I there were things that I couldn't find it was just messy it was getting out of control so I did have to buy a bunch of these plastic bags I'm really sad about that but it works for me and I'm going to try to reuse these until I can't reuse them anymore however when it's all said and done this is still plastic waste and at the end of the day I created a lot of waste by buying all of this plastic Hopefully I will get many, many years of use out of this. So what I do is I label the bag here and I have probably 20 bins, H100. They're all letters. You can do it however you want. You can put numbers on yours. You can give them, them names, whatever. However you wanna do it, this is the corresponding bag and it goes inside of the corresponding bin. And this has saved me so much time by implementing this system here. Now, there are times that I forget to put in my listing where the item is, so make no mistake about it, there are still times that I'm scrambling around having to dig through 20 bins worth of items trying to find stuff because I failed to write down which bin the item was in. It still happens. Let's talk about my sales for August. Nothing to write home to mama about, but these are realistic numbers. Maybe you can relate. Again, this video was all last minute, so these are just rough numbers. I did not do the breakdown. I don't know how much money I made at the end of the day, <clears throat> but hopefully you can learn something from this. Let's talk about Poshmark. <laughs> Let's talk about Poshmark, shall we? And if you don't like this part, if you don't want to hear the numbers, if you don't want to hear me talk about Poshmark, then thanks for being here. Make sure that you subscribe on the way out and come back and watch some more of these videos so that I can continue to bring you more content and hopefully give you a realistic view of what it's like being a bread and butter seller. Poshmark is, is completely inconsistent for me. Inconsistent has been since day one, will probably forever continue to be that way. Those people who say that they are making $25,000 a year, $50,000 a year on Poshmark, I'm pretty sure those are those sellers who live like in Los Angeles, California, right? Um, or they live in New York City, New York, right? Where, where there's Couture and there's Prada and there's Chanel and there's like all these really desirable, desirable, desirable brands. If you live in Los Angeles, California, you're lucky uh, and I'm happy for you and you probably find a lot of Couture stuff. So, but I don't think that that's realistic for the average seller who cannot get those types of items. So Poshmark is has always been inconsistent for me. The difference between Poshmark and eBay, in my opinion, is that 
eBay, eBay and I, we have a reciprocal relationship. And what that means is that the more time that I put into eBay, the more energy that I put into eBay, uh, the more that I list, the better results I see. It doesn't matter what I'm listing. I can be listing junk. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is that the more I list, the more I sell. eBay has always been that way. Poshmark, on the other hand, is not a reciprocal relationship, in my opinion. I have just as many items, which is right around the thousand mark, nine hundred. Poshmark may have a few less, but overall, like nine hundred items on Poshmark. I am constantly delisting stuff, relisting stuff, constantly adding new items, sharing, doing all that stuff that we're supposed to do, and Poshmark just just does not give back. Me and Poshmark were a one-sided relationship. I'm doing everything, and she just does not give back what she needs to give. Nonetheless, I'm not going to stop posting on her because I make a few dollars from her every every month. So I'm just going to keep on with this one-sided relationship with her. So on Poshmark for the month of August, I sold 14 items. And two of those were bundles. I don't get a lot of bundles on Poshmark despite having like 900 items on there. Rare to get bundles. I was very surprised because in the month of August, I actually got two bundles of two items, which was surprising. The lowest priced item that I sold on Poshmark was for $14. And I think it was probably that Ann Taylor Loft that I just showed you was the lowest priced item that I sold on there. And the highest priced item that I sold on Poshmark wasn't really an item. It was a bundle that I sold for $55. And I sold a total of 14 items. On eBay for the month of August, I sold 47 items. So just compare that. I put the same amount of effort, I think, into Poshmark and eBay. Same amount of effort, same amount of items. I'm listing things every day. I'm delisting, I'm relisting every day. And on Poshmark, I sold 14 items. And on eBay, I sold 47 items. On eBay, one of those sales was a bundle, a two-piece bundle of two beach lunch lounge tops sold in a bundle together. Uh, so that was 47 items. My lowest priced item that I sold on eBay was the Raya Sun white tank top that I just showed you for $9. And the highest priced item that I sold was for $39.99. And they were some Crocs. Crocs women's sandals. They had like a cute design on the front of it. You may have seen them in one of my other videos. They're, they're the blue thong ones. And I think I was saying in that video that I haven't sold Crocs in years. I have no idea. And those Crocs, I, they must have been something special. They sold within, I want to say a week for, for full price. So I was really happy about that. Again, I don't know altogether what my profit margin was. Hopefully next month I will be more prepared and have that laid out for you. But this just gives you a, a basic idea of what you can expect. Now, how do I do business? How did I sell 47 items? 47 items may sound like a lot to you. It might sound like a little bit. It just depends. I think that for having 1,100 items in my eBay store, I think that 47 items is not enough. Um, but as time goes by, I am getting better. And I have noticed as I was going over some of my recent sales, I'm noticing that more and more of my items are selling within three months. And three months for me is totally reasonable. Even six months. I don't want stuff that's going to sit for more than six, six months. So what I'm doing is I have obviously I'm going through my store. I'm trying to clear out. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm trying to downsize my business and I want to concentrate more on items that are going to sell faster. This doesn't mean that that how I do business is going to change in the sense that I'm never, I'm still going to be a bread and butter seller. That's still what I'm doing. I don't think that's ever going to change. I just don't live in an area where that can change from what I can see. So it's still gonna be bread and butter, but I just have to be a little more selective and get these things flying out the door a lot faster because I'm quickly running out of space. So I hope that this video helped you and I hope that you learned something either about what's selling, as you can see. I should have done the math. Just in the last four days, in the last four days, because these were my sales from August 31st, in the last four days, two, four, six, eight, 
hundred. Uh, just going over it really quickly and doing the math in my head. This looks to be right around two hundred and fifty dollars gross sales. Um, yeah, I would have to do the math. So it's like two hundred and fifty dollars roughly of gross sales. I wish I would have done the math prior to, to you doing all that, but but that's not bad. And you can assume, or when I've run the numbers in the past, I, I can assume that I keep about 60% of the gross after eBay, say, after eBay sales, after taxes, all that good stuff. I still end up with about 60% profit, I think. If that's wrong, we'll talk about it more next month when I do my what's sold. So hopefully this helped you. And make sure that you like, subscribe, and commenting helps a lot. Have a great day, y'all. Happy selling.